Hello dear friends, welcome back again to another video of my YouTube channel. Here in this video, we will try to understand the transfer section of the young anther. That means here we are going to discuss the anatomy of the young anther. This concept is very very important for both board as well as for competitive exams. This question was asked in the year 2015 for 5 marks, in the year 2018 for 3 marks. And it has been asked, the concept, the entire concept has been asked in the various competitive exams like uh, Madhya Pradesh PMT in 2014, Jammu Kashmir CET in 2014, AIMS in 2013, Kerala CET in 2010, Maharashtra CET in 2017, Jammu and Kashmir CET in 2006, Andhra Pradesh CET in 2005. Let us understand the transfer section of the young anther. Before we discuss the internal structure of the anther, we have to understand what is this anther is. To understand that, if I draw a typical bisexual flower, bisexual flower consists of various fascinating structures in it. I hope you people have seen these kind of structures in the flower. And these two structures are very very important. These two structures are held on a platform like structure called as a receptacle. And this portion it is called as the male reproductive part of the flower. Male reproductive part of the flower. And this is supposed to be the female reproductive part. It is female reproductive part of the flower. At the base of this male and female reproductive part, there is a leaf like appendages, green color appendages at the base of these two structures. These are called as sepals. They are the sepals. Whereas the most fascinating, most attractive, beautiful part of the flower they are called as petals. They are called as petals. These four are the major parts of the flower. Sepals and petals, they are not directly involved in the reproductive process. That is why they are called as accessory holes. Accessory holes. Whereas this female part and the male part, let us write their scientific name. The female part, it is generally called as gynoecium. It is gynoecium. Whereas the male reproductive part, it is called as androecium. Androecium. That means androecium is the male reproductive part of the flower. Gynoecium is the female reproductive part of the flower. Androecium and gynoecium both are directly involved in the reproductive process. Hence, these two are called as essential holes. These two are called as accessory holes and these two are called as essential holes. Now, let us take a closer look of this androecium. That means the male reproductive part of the flower so that we can have a clear picture about what is anther, how is the anther? What are the basic things in the anther? Let us draw only the anther. This is the anther. Anther is connected to a long filament like structure, a long stalk like structure. This stalk, it is called as filament. Filament. It is the filament. Whereas these two chambers, they are called as anthers. Anthers. Filament is connected to anther at this junction. This junction is called as connective. It is connective. These are the three major parts of the androecium. Anther, connective and the filament. Filament's job is to hold the anther up in the flower. Whereas anther is a chamber. Anther is a pouch in which the pollen grains are getting synthesized. And connective, it is a junction where 
anther connects the filament. Suppose if this is the anther, this is the filament, anther get connected to the filament like this. That is the connective. If we tray the transfer section of this anther, that means if you hold the anther like this and take the transfer section of the anther, then this kind of structure appears. If you take the transfer section of the anther, it is simply called as the TS of anther, then a kind of structure appears. Let us study this structure now. Anthers are generally bilobed. Bilobed. Anthers are generally bilobed and they are dithecus. They are bilobed and dithecus. Now, what is bi and di here? Both are giving the same meaning. Bi also means two, di also means two. Bilobed. Anther is a bilobed structure. That means here we have two lobes in the anther. This is the half of the lobe and this is another half of the lobe. This is one lobe and this is another lobe. That means we have two lobes. This much portion is the first lobe and this is the second lobe. Two lobes are there. That is why it is bilobed. And dithecus. In each lobe we have two thecas. These are the thecas. These are the thecas. In each lobe, we have two thecas. That means totally in a bilobed anther, how many thecas we have? We have totally four thecas. Two theca in one lobe. This is one lobe. This is one theca. This is second theca. This is third theca and fourth theca. First and second theca are present in the first lobe. Third and fourth theca are present in the second lobe. Now we will study this in detail. Now, if you carefully study the anatomy of the anther, anther is the most important part for a plant. Why? Because within this anther, pollen grains are getting nourished and we know what are these pollen grains. Pollen grains are the male gametophytes. That means they are carrying the male gametes and gametes need to be protected. Gametes are very important for a flowering plant. Hence, these gametes are protected inside the anther. Anther is covered with four layers of walls. The first layer of wall, it is called as epidermis. Epidermis. This is the first layer of wall. Second layer of wall, it is called as endothecium endothecium third layer it is called as a middle layer middle layer and the fourth layer it is very important very special kind of layer it is called as tepetum tepetum now let us study what is this epidermis endothecium middle layer and the tepetum they are the four anthredial walls this sequence is very, very important for competitive exams, my dear friends. Because so many a times, the anthridial walls are asked in the competitive exams. Arrange the following anthridial walls from in to out. Arrange the following anthridial walls from out to in. What is the arrangement of anthridial walls from out to in? This layer is the epidermis. This black color is the endothecium. Red color, it is the middle layer and this one is the tapetum from out to in. Now coming uh, from in to out, it is the tapetum, middle layer, endothecium and epidermis. Remember this sequence. Now let us study the epidermis in detail. Epidermis, it is also called as exothecium. Exothecium. Exo means outside. Exothecium. Thecium means covering layer. Exothecium means outermost covering layer of the anther. Now, this epidermis, it is made up of flat, barrel shaped, barrel shaped, barrel shaped, 
compactly arranged compactly arranged compactly arranged cells compactly arranged cells this is the epidermis outermost layer barrel shape flat kind of cells compactly arranged that means tightly arranged without any intercellular spaces and this layer is a single layer single layer a single layer of cells these cells or this epidermis main job is to give protection to the anther to give protection to the anther now coming to the second layer very important it is endothecium endothecium means inner layer endo means inside exo means outside endothecium is the inner layer it is the second outermost layer which is made up of radially arranged radially arranged radially and compactly arranged compactly arranged arranged cells the cells are radially arranged and the cells are compactly tightly arranged without any intercellular space here this black color layer it is the endothecial cells endothecium is also a single layer of cell single layer of cell single layer of cell there is a lot there is a difference between epidermis and the endothecial cells epidermis is barrel shape flat kind of cells whereas endothecium they are radially arranged cells both the cells both the layers are compactly arranged but some of the endothecial cells they have the fibrous thickenings they have the fibrous thickenings red color that i have mentioned here they have the fibrous thickenings these fibrous thickenings these cells they have fibrous thickening they have the fibrous thickenings these fibrous thickenings helps in dehiscence dehiscence of anther dehiscence of anther what do you mean by dehiscence dehiscence means splitting breakdown of the anther here as we have discussed earlier this is a structure in which the pollen grains are present pollen grains are exactly produced here inside the theca and this theca is called as microsporangium or it is also called as a pollen sac in which the pollen grains are getting nourished once the pollen grains are produced they are nourished when they get matured they rupture the anthridial wall and they come out for pollination that process is called as dehiscence of anther it is also called as that entire process is called as anthesis 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 means release of mature pollen grains by breaking the anthridial walls for pollination purpose that is called as anthesis now these fibrous thickening they help in breakdown of the anther not all the endothecial cells they have the fibrous thickening some of the cells they don't have any fibrous thickenings without fibrous thickening cells without without fibrous thickening cells without fibrous thickenings they are called as stomium stomium cells they are the stomium cells stomium cells means they are the endothecial cells without fibrous thickenings not all the endothecial cells they have got the fibrous thickening some of the endothecial cells they do not have any kind of fibrous thickening such cells are called as stomium cells now its main job endothecium's main job is to provide protection 
protection as well as it helps in dehiscence dehiscence of anther whereas the epidermis main job is to provide the protection to the anther endothecium has got two very important functions one is giving protection to the anther and another one is it is helpful in the dehiscence of the anther now coming to the third layer it is the middle layer middle layer is generally made up of oval shape oval shape loosely arranged oval shape loosely arranged parenchyma cells parenchyma cells and this layer generally is of 3 to 4 layers of cells endothecium is also a single layer of cell epidermis it is also a single layer of cell whereas the middle layer is of 3 to 4 layers of cells three to four layers of the cells here red color cells they are all middle layer cells they are all parenchyma cells loosely arranged cells three to four layers of the cells now these epidermis endothecium and middle layer middle layers main job is again giving protection protection to the anther anther now the last layer tepatum tepatum as i told earlier it is very very important layer most of the questions in the competitive exams they appear from this tepatal layer because it is a very special kind of cells these special kind of cells they pro they they are helpful in the various important functions in the anther and in the development of the pollen grain this layer will discuss in the next video thank you